Welcome back to McNulty's Book Corral. Today is April 1st, and it's National Poetry Month, and so I thought that I would um, acknowledge National Poetry Month with a poem by Lawrence Ferlinghetti. Now, in my uh, long and wicked life, I've had the pleasure of meeting a lot of poets, some famous, some infamous, some unknown, uh, but it was a privilege to do that in my relationship with the literary world of poetry goes back a very long time. I'm not going to share too many of those stories today, but I am going to talk about the one poet that I love. Really, he's at the top of my list of poets that have been influential to me uh, that I never met, uh, and that's Lawrence Ferlinghetti. So I, back in 2005, I purchased a broadsheet from City Lights Bookstore, and that's this broadsheet that he signed. And the poem is called, Are There Not Still Fireflies? Now let me just reach up here because I forgot to grab it. Um, that poem can be found in this book, which is How to Paint Sunlight from the uh, early millennium. And a couple years later, they put out this broadsheet, so I purchased it. And I'm going to read the poem to you now, right off the broadsheet. So here we go. Are there not still fireflies in America? Are there not still four-leaf clovers? Is not our land still beautiful? Are fields not full of armed enemies? Are cities never bombed by foreign invaders? Never occupied by iron armies? Speaking iron tongues? Are not our warriors still valiant, ready to defend us? Are not our senators still wearing fine togas? Are we not still a great people in the greatest country in all the world? Is this not still a free country? Are not our fields still ours? Our gardens still full of flowers? Our ships with full cargoes? Why then do some still fear the barbarians are coming, coming, coming? In their huddled masses? What is that sound that fills the ear? Drumming, drumming? Is not Rome still Rome? Is not Los Angeles still Los Angeles? Is not beauty still beauty and truth still truth? Are there not still poets? Are there not still lovers? Are there not still mothers, sisters, and brothers? Is there not still a full moon once a month? Are there not still fireflies? Are there not still stars at night? Can we not still see them in bowl of night signaling to us our manifest destinies. The late, great Lawrence Ferlinghetti, one of only two signed broadsheets that I own, the other one being a broadsheet signed by Jim Harrison, who was a writer I hope to cover one day. I keep talking about it, and I never get to him. Um, one of the reasons why I, I liked Lawrence Ferl Ferlinghetti and always return to him is not only the quality of his work, but because he was always an activist. Um, a Coney Island of the Mind, this was the first book I ever read by Lawrence Ferlinghetti in high school, and I have quite a few of his books here, and he has written some remarkable books in his life. Um, I would recommend that you look for them and see what it means to you to read a book like this. Um, you know, he, uh, he's just that type of guy. He, uh, he was always involved in understanding what the government was doing and using poetry as a forum for discussion on the things that were always so wrong in the world. Um, so with that said, I want to keep this one short because some of my videos lately have been long. Um, it's just a little bit from Lawrence Ferlinghetti. And so to close this episode to acknowledge National Poetry Month, uh, what you'll see next is a little visual piece I put together using uh, a kaleidoscope, a homemade kaleidoscope by my dear friend, Trudy, who is no longer with us, and she gave this to me as a gift. She made this many decades ago. Um, and I used this kaleidoscope, I filmed through it, and then I recorded um, another poem by Lawrence Ferlinghetti from the same book, How to Paint Sunlight. And that poem that you'll hear me reading is called Instructions to Painters and Poets. And my friends, 
Stay well, stay happy, and I'll see you soon. Instructions to Painters and Poets by Lawrence Ferlinghetti. I asked a hundred painters and a hundred poets how to paint sunlight on the face of life. Their answers were ambiguous and ingenious as if they were all guarding trade secrets, whereas it seems to me all you have to do is conceive of the whole world and all humanity as a kind of artwork, a site-specific artwork, an art project of the God of Light, the whole earth and all that's in it to be painted with light. And the first thing you have to do is paint out postmodern painting. And the next thing is to paint yourself in your true colors, in primary colors, as you see them, without whitewash. Paint yourself as you see yourself, without makeup, without masks. Then paint your favorite people and animals with your brush loaded with light. And be sure you get the perspective right, and don't fake it, because one false line leads to another. And then paint the high hills when the sun first strikes them on an autumn morning. With your palette knife, lay it on the cadmium yellow leaves, the ochre leaves, the vermilion leaves of a New England autumn, and paint the ghost light of summer nights and the light of the midnight sun, which is moonlight. And don't paint out the shadows made by the light. For without chiaroscuro, you'll have shallow pictures, so paint all the dark corners too, everywhere in the world, all the hidden places and minds and hearts, which light never reaches, all the caves of ignorance and fear, the pits of despair, the sloughs of despond, and write plain upon them, abandon all despair, ye who enter here. And don't forget to paint all those who live their lives as bearers of light, paint their eyes in the eyes of every animal, and the eyes of beautiful women, known best for the perfection of their breasts, and the eyes of men and women, known only for the light of their minds, paint the light of their eyes, the sunlight of sunlit laughter, the song of eyes, the song of birds in flight, and remember that the light is within, if it is anywhere, and you must paint from the inside, start with purity, with pure white, the pure white of gesso, the pure white of cadmium white, the pure white of flake white, the pure virgin canvas, the pure life we all begin with. Turner painted sunlight with egg tempura, which proved unstable, and Van Gogh did it with madness in the blood of his ear, also unstable, and the Impressionist did it by never using black, and the Abstract Expressionist did it with white house paint, but you can do it with a pure pigment, if you can figure out the formula of your own true light. But before you strike the first blow on the virgin canvas, remember its fragility, life's extreme fragility, and remember its innocence, its original innocence, before you strike the first blow. Or perhaps never strike it, and let the light come through the inner light of the canvas, the inner light of the models posed in the life study, the inner light of everyone. Let it all come through like a pentimentum, the light that's been painted over, the life that's been painted over so many times. Let it all surge to the surface, the painted over image of primal life on earth. And when you've finished your painting, stand back astonished, stand back and observe the life on earth that you've created, the lighted life on earth that you've created, a new, brave world.